initially when we first got the diagnosis, it was devastating. Like the doctor that came into the room to give us a diagnosis said that it was the worst news he could give a family. I didn't believe him at the time. I thought maybe like he says that to everybody. Yeah, hi. Good morning. What is going on? Good morning, sir. Come on in. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. How's it going? Straight from our image. Yeah? Do you want to... Are you being cute? Yeah? How long has the little one been up here? I don't know. I think he woke up like at 5.30. Yeah, he does have a normal two-year-old schedule where he like sleeps from eight, you know, point A to point B. Every night's a little different. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. Oh, don't be so sad. Daddy's right here. I've got you, bud. I've got you, bud. Okay, one, two, three. Boof. Is that funny? Yes, it is. Is that funny, bud? Yeah. His stomach can't like process the food like super fast anymore, and so um, we we have to, we've had to slow down the rate to the point where it's basically on like two two ten hour meals every day. You think this is a game? Oh, why don't I get you? And three, two. How this has affected one. us as a married couple. Mm -hmm. Why don't I get you? It was it was hard. Um, it's the most depressed I've been in my life. And we both process things differently. How do you process things? I internalize a lot. If it wasn't for some of the people that we have in our life, I don't know that Joe and I would be together right now, yeah. to be honest. Um, it got pretty pretty bad, and I think it's because sometimes couples don't know how to communicate. That's something that maybe we're not taught how to do, is to communicate with each other, um, to do it well. Um, I feel like, at least from my upbringing, and I know from Joe's upbringing, like, we have a tendency to push things under the under the rug, just like sweep it under there. Of course. Until it gets so big that it blows up in your face. Something like this, what it does is it just brings all those little things, those little irritations to life, like in your face constantly throughout the day. Should we get you into some real clothes? Yeah. You want some real clothes? So this is um, a Meprazol. It helps. Emmett to digest his Mommy, food so that he doesn't like get really Mama. sick with his food. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's why we're we and we need to give it to him before this he has any food in his stomach, and Mama. I can't give him food until he's had it in his stomach for at least thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. So this it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I got you. I got you. Daddy's right here. Okay, buddy. I got you. Mommy's getting you some medicine. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Let's go get you dressed, okay, bud? Okay, come here. Oh. All right, come here. Okay. This is your least favorite part, I know. Here comes the waterworks. It's okay. He never wants to be put down because I think it makes him feel insecure. Okay, Dad, it's right here. Are you ready? I'm trying to be gentle, of course. It's okay, bud. No. Daddy's right here. Okay. Okay. Here you go, bud. Daddy's right here. 
And that's every time you change him. Every time. Just screams. I think one of the ways it's impacted our marriage is through, um, honestly, understanding just how selfish we are. <laughs> and and it kind of, it's kind of brought a new perspective to, to um, making someone else the priority every day instead of yourself. I think there's a balance to everything, and so that certainly has also shown itself that we, you know, that we need, you know, that we need more time with each other. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to a certain degree, there's, a, there, there's like a healthy amount of, of, of selfishness to have within your marriage. Sure. But it's been hard because um, it's, it's very difficult to, to get away from him safely and to, and to find care for him. So that's something we've been working on to find more respite care. Yeah. Gonna get his food ready. Sure. Already started it. Oh, oh Jackson, you are. You are such a little performer, aren't you? Yeah. So this is Nourish, one of the dietitians up at OHSU. Um, they recommended that, so we tried that, and he's doing good on it now. So I like to mix in some of his meds with the um, formula just because then I don't have to like worry about it later during the day and pushing meds constantly. So and what meds do you see here? Well, they're really more herbal supplements. Um, so like MCT oils. Um, this is kind of to help boost him to get some more fat meat on his bones. <laughs> Um, and also it does help with uh, brain health, so that was recommended. Um, and then again for more brain health is baby's DHA. And then just some extra vitamin D. But yeah, this has kind of become Emmett's corner of the kitchen. So it has like all of his meds and syringes and different things that I would need. He hasn't been sleeping very well lately, so like he'll wake up in the middle of the night at like 2 or 3 in the morning and be up for an hour. Mm. Um, and then like the only time that Joe and I can like actually do anything around the house or like talk to each other is after the boys are in bed at like 8 o'clock at night and so like we're up until like 10 30 11 30 mm. sometimes even midnight and then I'll go to bed and then within an hour or two of me going to bed he wakes up and is awake for an hour and then I sleep for maybe three hours. <laughs> How much sleep do you think you're getting these days? Um, hey, on average, on average um, probably four to five hey, mama. and like consecutive probably like two or three mommy. how do you as a mom deal with the fact that your it's gonna make me cry <laughs> that your baby's gonna pass away pretty quick in the grand scheme of things um, it's not easy it took me a week to really kind of just make a turn and come out of the depression and and some days like it's harder than others and you just you get up and you want to lay in bed and just cry some days or just like not do anything but you you just do you just get up and you just do it because he depends on you I believe when he does leave this earth that um well, I know he won't be in pain anymore, and um, and I believe I'll see him again, and and everything will be made new. So that's what gives me hope. And that's what gets me through. Um, but to actually go through it sucks. Uh, we weren't sure if he was gonna make it through this last hospitalization, just because every time he has gone on gone under anesthesia within a few days he starts to regress pretty significantly and this last time he lost his vision and so the next thing that he's supposed to lose is his hearing and when he lost his vision um it scared him and it still does and it still causes it causes him sadness and depression in his own two-year-old way because some days he'll wake up and he'll just cry and I think it's because because he was probably dreaming dreaming of being able to see mommy and daddy and walking and talking and then he wakes up to reality and even though I'm there and I'm trying to comfort him he just won't be comforted so so yeah, so that's um, that's hard to 
to watch him to go through and if we can avoid him to lose his hearing faster than it, it's gonna go then we're not gonna put him under anesthesia again because that's the only thing that gives him joy right now is to be able to hear mommy and daddy and his little and his big brother and to laugh and to understand what we're saying so for Emmett it would just be more devastating I think to lose his hearing than to lose his life it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Oh no, what are we gonna do? So I'm just getting Emmett's food ready in the pump. So I heard Joe oh, sorry. No, I heard sorry. Joe talking about how most kids that are tube fed get like three meals a day and they get a bolus feed. Um, but because of Emmett's nerve health, um, his gut motility so his stomach doesn't squeeze as fast as it should. Um, so he doesn't empty his stomach as quickly as most kids and people in general. Sure. So he's on the pump pretty much 24 seven. He gets like a four hour break in the middle of the night, but, um, it's mostly always on and going. So he goes at a very slow rate, like 40 mLs, 45 mLs an hour. So there's a lot of little, like <laughs> the little things that you find out as a, as a tube feeding mom and dad parent as a tube feeding parent. Um, so like you want to open the bag and make sure that it's not gonna, um, bubble up and come back out like what it's kind of doing right now. It's totally second nature now. Um, and then this is just like a habit too, in case like we're going to go out, like if, if we were going to go out of the house and put it, we have like this, I'll, I'll get it so you can see. Sure. So, um, I can take this off and detach it from the. Um, IV pull here. And then he can just walk around with and it. Then, or you yeah, walk around with yeah, it. Yeah, I can walk around right. and it has like this little hole that the tube comes out of and a little thing in here to hold the bag. But this bag is so big that if there's any air bubbles in here, then um, air would get into the into the pump and it would alarm like crazy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is his muscle relaxer. It's called Baclofen. He gets um, 0.5 mLs uh, four times a day. So it's basically just around the clock. Um, but we are actually going to be increasing it because this dosage, it's not quite working for him because he's still really tense. And then this, you wouldn't be able to tell if it's anything other than water. It's actually Miralax. Um, because again, with the stomach motility, <laughs> with the stomach motility being decreased, um, he has a hard time moving his bowels. So, and then this is Zantac. It's an antacid. So then the omeprazole or Prilosec is a proton pump inhibitor. It's just another, um, another medication that um, helps him to digest his food or not produce as much acid for acid reflux, actually, technically, this one would be. Hey, buddy, it's okay, it's okay. Okay. That's that alarm I was telling you about. <laughs> and that means, again, It means that <laughs> you forgot to turn it on, so I'm reminding you <laughs> that I'm still here and awake. Just for people that think they're like getting food and they're like, oh, I forgot to press the button. Gotcha. They're like, that's why I'm so hungry, like an hour later. <laughs> You think that's funny, huh? You think that's a game? Yes, he does. You do. Hey, do you want to give me a kiss? Do you want to give daddy a kiss? Do you want to give daddy a kiss? No. Hey, Dr. Paul here. We're going to cut away from what you're watching. We're going to get right back to it. But I wanted to take a moment to introduce the sponsor of this video, the Addiction Summit. I host the Addiction Summit. It's free. It's online. It runs August 13 to 19. You just need to sign up. The link's in the description. And you can watch 28 interviews that I host that will teach you everything you might possibly ever want to know about addictions, anxiety, depression, anything you might be struggling with, whether it's food, uh, screen time, relationships it's covered i can't wait to see you there it is free the links in the description and now back to our video what what do you want the uh impact of his story and his life to be beyond 
obviously the impact he's had on your life and Joe's life and Jackson's life. Right. That's a good question. Thanks. We want there to be a bigger like difference made um, in the world because of Crave and because of his story and um, the biggest impact I would say is to actually act on knowledge and not just receive knowledge just to have knowledge but to actually act on it so um, the fact that there's only six states right now in the country that screen for Crave mm -hmm. I think is just criminal because there is a treatment that's available um, that is very effective if it's caught early enough before symptoms start and the one of the specialists in um, Pennsylvania she told me when we went and saw her in February that she was one to three years away from a cure but that's only for the kids that are treated because it's still a clinical trial because it's a rare disease so you have to have had treatment first in order to receive the cure so that's what I think would make the biggest impact is for us like kind of from a grassroots kind of foundation mm -hmm. to start making a movement happen where we ask for these screenings to be available because there's no reason that it shouldn't be available. Um, it's not expensive. Like it's five to an extra five to seven dollars per newborn born in the state of Oregon to implement Crabby newborn screening. Like that's I mean, I don't know a parent that wouldn't pay an extra five to seven bucks just to make sure that they didn't have to go through what we're going through. Um, so that's like my, our biggest drive or rally force is just to make change happen. RUSP, Recommended mm. Universal Screening Protocol, mm. um, they recommend 60 different diseases be screened for because either one, it impacts um, future family planning or even just the child to know that they're a carrier mm -hmm. or um, there's a treatment available or a cure or lifestyle changes that you can make in order to have a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. And then for families um, that are currently like thinking about having kids or are pregnant or just had a baby, like to go to Hunter's Hope um, Foundation and and request the supplemental newborn screen to make sure that their child has been screened for all 60 of those diseases so they they can give their child the best chance at life um, and a good quality life. You can just go on their website, order a kit, and they'll ship it to you and then um, you take it to your pediatrician and they will tell you how to get it done. Some pediatricians I think will actually do it in the office and others will refer you to an outpatient clinic to get the actual poke, <laughs> the actual blood drawn. Right. Um, but it's, it's like, why wouldn't you? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. So this is Emmett's room. In this box is, um, it's a nebulizer. Because he has low muscle tone because of the um, disease, um, he's not able to cough as well mm -hmm. as us and like he doesn't have maybe um the strength to breathe deeply especially when he gets sick mm -hmm. how well he gets through cold and flu season will determine his prognosis and how long he lives so my hope is to get all of the machines that we need here in the house before cold and flu season um arrives so that if he does get some kind of infection i can treat it at home right. versus having to go to the hospital right this is the suction machine and so we put this um, put this pretty far into his mouth um, and then just like when you go to the dentist it takes out all the moisture out of his mouth since he has trouble dealing with the he has trouble dealing with his secretions this is good for just like surface stuff in the mouth mm -hmm. um, but he because of his uh, low muscle tone has a hard time coughing things up because we don't want him to um, to inhale it into his lungs or aspirate on mm -hmm. it because then he gets aspiration pneumonia. What is that? Are you ready? Go, 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 go. So most nights it's like this. Yep, it's just like this. We sleep like this. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes if I'm lucky. I can sneak my arm out and then I have my arm to myself. Yeah. That's if I'm lucky. Uh -huh. 
And sometimes I'll even sleep with him like up on me. <laughs> like, sure. Like kind of like this. Huh, oh, buddy? We'll sleep like that. Huh? That's your favorite, isn't it? Yeah. Having gone through what you've gone through, mm -hmm. um, what what thoughts do you have for other families that are starting down a journey that involves, you know, having to deal with the, the loss of a child that's impending? Something that you said when we sat down and talked for a few hours that really impacted me and my ability to make decisions um, was to put myself in Amit's shoes mm -hmm. and to think to myself, what would he want? Mm -hmm. Um, how would he want to live his life? Yep. And so that's, I think, how we came to the decision that anesthesia just wasn't an option for us if it meant mm -hmm. that he would lose his hearing. Which so. was a possibility. Yeah. It's yep. a very strong possibility. Yeah. So. Oh, man, it's hard to let go of your loved one. So you don't want to make a decision that would result in them leaving you. Yeah. So you have to, like, embody them. You live every body system of that child. You're it. And to live it as a mom and the little by little by little letting go, that's really rough. But the bravery here of being willing to be Emmett's voice in this, right? Because you know he's going to go to a better place after he's done his work here. We have life missions. We don't always understand what they are. Like I'm over 60 years old and I'm starting to understand some of mine. He already is fulfilling a life mission that we're becoming aware of. Yeah. And you're helping make that possible by informing everybody about newborn screening that's not expensive for something that's devastating, that's easily, not easily, but fairly easily treated mm -hmm. to prevent the progression. Yes. I mean, there are examples of kids, I think you know these examples because you're now so connected with Crabbe and, yeah. and, and all that who have the same condition and are fine, right? Yeah, there's a there's an, another family in Oregon. Their, their eight-year-old, he has no symptoms whatsoever of Crabbe and he was transplanted at four months of age. Wow. Um, unfortunately, his older brother had to be diagnosed and he was too far progressed and he passed away two years ago in March. So. Wow. From Crabbe. Uh -huh. so, but he, he saved his brother's life. He saved his brother's life, and Emmett's going to save, along with all the others who are a part of this movement, save the life of maybe your child or your best friend's child who's going to go ahead and get this screening done. I mean, there may be other tests that will come down the pike that will do yeah. the same thing, but for right now, we're aware of this one that's very affordable. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's absolutely worth doing. Yeah. Yeah.